I'm not gonna be recording. This has been one of our mo uh, most successful trainings uh, uh, over you know Zoom in a while. So I'm really happy you guys have all been here. I've loved hearing the stories that you guys send me after the fact of the successes you're having. Um, we had my good friend Lucas last week host this. Um, I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed uh, a a break for me, but b getting to listen to Lucas. Lucas is fantastic. He's a, a, an incredible agent, a really good friend. So glad that he was able to take that. And um, yeah, so you're, we're, today is our, our final session of bagging leads. But uh, if for all of our regions over the next couple of months, our innovation exchanges are coming to y'all in Florida. Um, in I, surprisingly like two weeks, um, I'm going to be down there. Um, a few of us are going to be down there. And then uh, Ohio and Michigan are early October. Um, we're, we've got a listings to leads table planned for these events too, where we're going to go over some of the stuff that we've talked about in these courses. So um, as always, this is not your uh, last time to get to talk about listings to leads. Keep in mind, these are all recorded. You can find any of these on schmidtvideoclassroom.com. But uh, I, I wanted to kind of carry over a little bit of um, Lucas's topic from last week in that I want to talk about some ads that we can run from listings to leads if we don't have listings. So the first three that that, that I hosted, we talked about um, just listed, or I believe we talked about under contracts, open houses, and just solds or just listed. And if I, um, if nothing changed since I last talked to Lucas last week, we talked about um, the PDF guides that are available um, that are kind of independent of listings. I want to go back to, um, I, I say back to basics. I want to go back to one of my favorite features in listings to leads, which are the home evaluation forms. Um, I have been a big um, uh, advocate of those for a while because not to get into the marketing philosophy too deep, but if you want someone's lead information, we've talked about this on previous sessions, if you want someone's lead information, why should I give it to you? As the consumer, what do I get in return? Obviously, as an agent, I want your email and phone number so I can reach out to you and maybe have you as my real, or you know, as a client, I can sell your home. But as a consumer, why should I give you my information? What value am I going to get in return? Um, and one of those pieces of, uh, you know, one of those pieces of value is information on the listings, right? Which is why they're so powerful with listing-based ads. But I also want to talk about what you can provide someone if you don't have a listing to, to leverage. Um, that's why those PDF guides are great because they are a deliverable, they are a physical or a PDF. Hey, here is a thing you get if you fill out this form. And I also want to talk about home evaluations. So, I have been a huge believer in the listings to leads home evaluations for years. It was the first thing in the tool that I actually really promoted and fell in love with and then um, uh, really came around to the rest of it. So I want to talk about those and show you how those work here. So I'm going to share my screen as we've been doing. Hopefully you guys can see uh, the screen here. Um, and a home evaluation uh, is exactly what it sounds like. So on the, on the left-hand side over here, I'm going to go to landing pages. And I'm going to open that in a new tab just so we can see it in the new tab. Now, I have uh, videos on Schmidt Video Classroom that are long form that will show you how to go through these things and build them all step by step. But what these pages are, if I click on view on this one right here, is they're exactly what they sound like. They are home evaluations. What is your home worth now? I titled this one Northern Michigan, but what is your Northern Michigan home worth now? If you put in an address... Um, I'm going to put in the address of the Holland, one of the Holland offices. It's going to ask me to get my estimate. It's two steps. Step one is I get a little map with a point where I am, and it says your report is ready. If you are interested, send us, you know, give me your info. Now, right now, his is defaulting to just my email address, but you can add email, phone, uh, uh, something, a, a name, obviously. Uh, wh what are you interested in? I'm going to say I need to sell soon and I'm going to put in view my report. And then what happens is that agent gets that information and I get a report right here. Now, this is a commercial listing. It is this, literally the Holland office, um, which is why it's not giving me an actual report. But in theory, and, and not even in theory, every other time I used to use my home address and I decided to stop doing that for obvious reasons. So um, anytime you put an actual residential address in, a full report comes up and then I as the consumer, get that report in my email as well. And again, if I look at it here, it would it would actually show up here because there's not one at the moment. So um, 
So that's how the landing pages work if you use a residential uh, address. Um, I'm a big believer in these because what you're doing is you're giving someone value, right? You're saying here is a home evaluation. They get it instantly. They get it right there on their screen. And then they also get it in their email. And then you, as the agent, if you go to your leads, you'll see that person's information right there. And if they gave an actual listing that worked, you would see the address of the home that they asked about. So I'm going to delete that out of Jeff's um, account so he's not confused. So that is the sort of uh, 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 content I want us to leverage. We're going to talk about how to leverage these landing pages. I don't want to get too in the weeds on how to create the landing pages right now because, um, like I said, we have other trainings on that. But the very short version is literally you click create landing page. You can choose this top option, property valuation plus. That's what you want to use. And then you can give it a name of some sort. But I do highly, highly recommend editing these pages, putting some edits because the default photo for a home valuation is this one right here. This is the default. I'm not putting any work into it. Home valuation page that should be in all of your accounts right now. And it's not very powerful. It's, you know, I go, okay, this is a computer. Cool. Why should I care about that? What does it have to do with real estate? What does it have to do with my home evaluation? Whereas if you go in and make some edits like I did to this one, I'll click the big green edit button here. I've made the background here a little bit different, right? I put a nice home in the background. I also on the left over here, clicked on the social media share image and customized that so that this is the image that comes through. Home values have changed. It's got Jeff's photo there and it's got a home in the area. So again, that's the stuff that you can find in the trainings on Schmidt Resources, or sorry, Schmidt Video Classroom already is all of the details on the nitty gritty on how to do this. What I want to show you guys is how to leverage this for ads like we've been talking about the past few weeks. Um, uh, Ted, I'm actually going to answer that question a little bit later. He asks, is it better to have just email for landing pages or email and phone? I'm actually going to loop back around to that. Um, it's kind of one of the crux uh, points of today's conversation. So hold tight there. Um, so what we're going to do to get to that point is we're going to go back. I'm just in listings to leads, normal page here. And on the left-hand side, I am of course going to click on ads and I'm going, it's going to take us to the ads page. This is where we spent um, a lot of time the past few days, uh, past few weeks, I should say. Um, can you believe it? This is the fifth session already. I remember doing the first one. Um, so we've talked about create listing ads, created PDF ads. Now we're going to do this third one right here, create listing landing page ad. So I'm gonna click on that one and it's gonna give me the option to choose the landing page I wanna uh, work on. You can see a couple of the options I've made here, but that Northern Michigan one, that is the one that I just was looking at, that we were just looking at together. The one that had um, the home on the on the social image and stuff like that. So I'm going to keep that selected, but it's going to give us two options here, lead ads and traffic ads. Now, this is the only time I'm going to talk about the traffic ad um, uh, because everything else we've done the past few weeks, we've talked about exclusively lead ads. But I want to show you there's there are two options here to use for um, the home evaluations. And I will say that um, neither of them are bad options, but I will explain to you what I re what my personal recommendation is after I explain them both. So as we've talked about before, and it's going to be hard to kind of fully explain without being able to show you directly, but what a Facebook lead ad uh, is, what we've talked about before is that a Facebook lead ad, and might actually be able to show me here, is that if somebody sees one of your ads on Facebook, so it's saying that they want to show it to me. If they If they see this ad on Facebook, I'll do show ad. See if it works the way I want it to. Please, please work. Here we go. If I see this ad, I go, oh, interesting. And I'm scrolling on Facebook and I click learn more. A form pops up right here, right in front of me with my e name, email, and phone number automatically filled in right from Facebook. All I have to do is choose one of these options. Just thinking uh, one, three months, three, six, whatever. And then I click next. And then that info gets automatically sent to Jeff for him to follow up with me on. This right here is a Facebook lead ad form. You are not going off of Facebook at all. The form is filled out right here. What a traffic ad is, 
a Facebook traffic ad is if I go to my business page, I'm trying to find a post as an example here. Um, and I, I think I have a home evaluation on here, which is what I'm scrolling down to try to find. So something like this, right? This is, uh, it says home values have changed. So this is like a listing to leads home evaluation um, post. A traffic ad, if I click on the ad on Facebook, is going to take me to a landing page. So it's going to take me here. If you notice, it takes me off Facebook to this web page. So traffic takes me to a different destination, whereas a lead ad has me fill out the information right on Facebook. Now, right here, what we're looking at, the, I say, you know, it takes you to a different web page off of Facebook. It's still going to ask me for that information like you guys saw earlier, right? I'm going to put my address in and then it's going to ask me for my, you know, my phone, my email, my name and stuff like that. It's still going to ask me for that information. So um, I'm going to show us how to do an ad in a second, but I want to talk about the pros and cons of both of these here. So if you do the Facebook lead form, the, the, the first option where it pops up automatically on Facebook, there it's going to autofill all of that information for you, right? Phone, email, name, and then they can select that one other option and they click submit and you get all of that information, name, phone, email. The downside to that version is that they can't put their address in through the Facebook lead form for privacy reasons through Facebook. If they want to continue to get that, that um, uh, uh, valuation right away, it's going to redirect them to that landing page and they'd have to fill it out again. So that's an extra step. So if you do the lead ad form, the pro is that you're going to get name, email, and phone number and allow you to follow up right away with them and say, hey guys, JD here, you know, I saw that you um, you filled out a form online, you were interested in a home evaluation. Um, I'd love to do that for you complimentary, you know, right away. If you, do you mind uh, sending me or telling me the address you're interested in so I can start um, pulling some information for you. So you get more contact info, but you have to do a little bit more legwork. The other way, if you do a traffic ad, it's going to direct them right to that page. It's going to put, let them put their address right there, give you their info if they do so, and then they get that report in their inbox and you get that report as well. The pro there, the, the upside to that one is that they get the report and information right away and you do as well. The downside is that the quantity of leads that you're going to get is going to be a lot lower because it's taking them off of Facebook. They have to fill out the information manually, and then they have to wait for pages to load. Um, and then also, there's a good chance that a lot of people, after they put their address in, and it says, okay, give me your, you know, your name and phone number and email, um, will just click away at that point and not fill out the rest of the information. So the traffic ads, if they follow the entire funnel, are a bit more robust and complete. They get more information out of it. However, because it requires that many more steps, people are less likely to do it. So the quantity of leads you get will be lower. My personal preference, uh, again, I think either of those have, have um, value to them. My personal recommendation is to do the Facebook lead ad part where they fill out the form right there and you follow up. The reason being is because you get name, email, and phone number guaranteed from those. The form won't submit if someone deletes any of those. So name, email, phone number guaranteed and then secondly, you've got something to follow up with them now. You have a reason to reach out as opposed to, hey, I saw you were interested in real estate. What can I do for you, right? You've got a very specific thing you get to talk to them about. Like I said, it's, um, I'll pick someone's, let me pick a name here. I'll go, hey, Michelle, I saw that you fill out this form on uh, face, Facebook, interested in a home evaluation. I would love to provide that for you, um, completely complimentary. Would you mind providing me with the address you're interested in listing or interested in having an evaluation for? And I'll get to work uh, on that right away. You can text that to them. You can email that to them. You can call them and ask them that. But you have all of those methods. So my recommendation is to do that. Um, you will get more leads that way, but I don't think either way is wrong. So I want to, I want to make that clear. So I want to show us how to do either of those, because the, the beauty of it is that no matter which of those you want to do, the way you do it is basically exactly the same. So what we're going to do here, take a sip of water first. That's what we're going to do first. Stay hydrated. So what we're going to do is we're going to click create landing page ad. Now the landing page that we're using was already selected, my Northern Michigan landing page. 
and I am going to do a lead ads uh, ad. If you want to do a traffic ad, you can simply select that and the next steps are the exactly the same. So I'm going to click lead ads. I'm going to go to create ad. Of course, we're going to wait for it to load. And it brings us to the screen that we are super duper familiar with for the, um, the past uh, few sessions here. Now, I've said this before, listings to leads auto creates all of this stuff here. The text, the head, this image is pulled from what I created, but I can edit a lot of the stuff here. Um, one thing that I really like about this though, is specifically about the um, uh, home evaluation ads we're looking at here is this first line. Now we are technically, you know, surprising probably to you is surprising to me. Today is, oh no, okay. I almost lied to everybody. That would have been really awkward. Tomorrow is September 1st. Today is August 31st. Um, so I believe what happens is it'll it'll update for us every month. But if tomorrow was September 1st and you came here and did this ad, the text here would default to August, and I can even edit it right here. August home sales in Northern Michigan are in and your home's value has changed. Click below to get your new home value estimate uh, now free and instantly. So here's what I like about this. They're using the time, you know, it doesn't feel as um, uh, generic, if you will, when you're using like current days and times and stuff. August home sales are in. Uh, and I might even, maybe you want to be more specific and say in for Traverse City or Grand Traverse County or wherever you are. Um, and your home's value has changed. So it's taking current ideology, current verbiage to make it relevant to when I see it on September 1st or September 2nd. Um, you could go a step further and actually get a stat or two from your local MLS. I say this with our digital marketing team. I say this on almost every training I have the opportunity to. Local stats in your market are incredibly valuable right now. The people, uh, the, the, the common uh, you know, citizens of the world are very uh, confused right now when it comes to what's going on in the real estate market. I actually just read an article yesterday that said that buyers actually aren't skittish about buying right now. Again, this is from a survey, so it's not, uh, um, this is a generalization based off of the, that data. They're not skittish about buying, they're just confused about what's going on in the market. They want information. It's not that they don't wanna buy anymore, they just don't know. Is it a good time to buy? Is it not? Where is the market right now? I heard rates were going up, I heard the Fed was doing this. What's going on? So information is value. Information is key right now. I can't, I mean, again, honestly, if you take one thing away from, from this today, it's that is the content that is king right now. Content is king, in ter or, or the content that is king right now is local stats, what is going on in my market, what is happening in my community, my neighborhood. Anyway, off that horse. So um, you could take it a step further and go into your local MLS or uh, talk to your broker and get a couple of those stats. So maybe you say something like, I'm going to make a stat up, so don't quote me. August home sales are in for Traverse City. Uh, oh, see, I already uh, screwed up my verbiage. See, that's why I shouldn't go into that other stuff. August home sales for Traverse City are in, and your home's value has changed. And then maybe I say something like, um, homes, uh, homes sold on average 7% over asking price. Right. So again, if you're using any claim like that, back it up, make sure you have the data, back it up. So now I, not, now I'm not just saying, Hey, August stats are in and they're good. Now I'm giving an actual statistic for my community. So I'm saying it, I'm, it's not a generic, do you want your home's value? Let me, you know, let me tell you what it is. You're giving more uh, real world information. Um, so then over here again, on the left-hand side, we're doing what we've been doing the past few weeks, right? Um, because this is not based on an address, they do ask for a city this time for you to add. So I'm going to add in Traverse City, Michigan. It's going to default to that 15 mile radius right there. Um, I'm going to say my budget's, budget's $50, start and stop. I can change this stuff if I want to. And then again, if we go down to the advanced options, we're going to be where we always are. So the pages are right. The target are people in that location. I'm going to add Zillow as an option here. Um, because, or as an interest there. I like to do Zillow and I like to do, of course, uh, real estate. Um, and then I'm going to go down all the way and I can text or change all of this stuff here if I want to. So when I made that landing page, 
I had called it Northern Michigan, which is why you see here, what is your Northern Michigan homes potential sale price? I might say, you know what? Northern Michigan is too generic. I like that I've changed it to Traverse City. So I'm simply going to go in here and say, what is your Traverse City homes potential sale price? And you can see it updates automatically for me right there. So headline, description, call to action is learn more. Um, get quote. I mean, it kind of makes sense for this, but it's still kind of weird. So I like to just keep it to learn more. And then I go down and I click publish. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Again, that last part, these advanced options, I don't even need to worry about if I'm happy with them. I put the location in, I put my budget in, I make sure this looks the way I want it to look, and then I publish. And then the leads start coming in. That really is it, guys. That's all that that's the the crux of what I wanted to show you guys is how to do landing pages. Because if you look back on the past five weeks now, we've talked about five different types of ad campaigns that you can use within listings to leads. Because frankly, once we've done session one, once you've seen session one, you've seen how to do these things, right? You've seen, I go into ads, I pull up my information. What the, what the hope of these classes were, these sessions were, were ideas for actual campaigns to execute the message to use, the, the data to leverage, whether that is a, again, an open house, a just listed, a just sold, an under contract, um, a PDF guide, uh, and of course now the landing pages. Here are the way, here are the things you can go out and leverage to run these campaigns with. And then the leads come in, and if you've got them set up the way that we've discussed previously, they're gonna go right into Moxie Engage for you to leverage and reach out to there. The next step, and I've said this probably every time in some way, shape or form, the next step after executing the campaigns like we've discussed here is following up with the leads. Now, I will be very uh, honest with you guys. I don't claim to be an expert on that. I'm not, you know, I'm a, I'm a licensed agent, but I don't sell. I'm in referral. You guys are the professionals. You are the realtors and you are the ones who know how to work your sphere. So if you have questions about that stuff, talk to other agents, talk to your broker. You know, um, if you have a coach, that is exactly an amazing thing to talk to a coach about. But what I like about this, the one thing I do feel more comfortable about specifically with um, the home evaluations is that that's your foot in the door. That is your reason for calling or emailing or texting. That is your follow-up is, hey, I heard you had interest uh, in a home. I saw you had an interest in a home evaluation. I'd love to provide that for you. Or if you do the traffic ad and they fill it out on the form and they give you that address and everything, you reach out and you go, hey there, JD, I saw that you reached out about your listing at you know 456 East 16th Street. Just wanted to ask and follow up to see if you felt that that evaluation was accurate. Do you feel like that um, seems right for your home? Do you have any questions about that evaluation? You've got a specific thing you're following up with. You've got something of value to reach out about. Um, so I, I, again, I'm a big believer in these home evaluation ads. I've loved them for, for years now. Um, they, again, if you look at the cost per ad or per lead for these ads, it's quite a lot lower than it is um, from the national average of, of $16. So does anybody have any questions here? Um, please write them in the chat. I, I'm, I'm Ted, I, I know I work around, or I talked around your answer. I'm going to answer it directly. Ted asked, is it better to have just email for landing pages or email and phone? Um, and unfortunately, like many of my answers in life, um, it depends. Um, it is, I would say as an agent, of course, it is better to have more information. Um, it's very easy to put in a spam email that I use or like one of my fake emails or fake emails, one of my emails that I um, don't really check all that often. However, that doesn't mean it's a dead lead because I've had cases where people reach out to an agent and say, hey, can you give me, um, can you switch me to this email? Because I've been using my spam email, but my wife and I are thinking of selling. And, and I'll reiterate again, the only kind of dead lead is someone who asks you to unsubscribe. Every other lead is possible at that point, is convertible, is, is incubatable, if you will. Um, so I think having more information is better. But like I said, the more information you ask, the less likely, the, the, the lower quantity you're going to get. So if you're going to do the landing page one, I would definitely recommend minimum name and email. Um, name, email, phone number is going to be ideal. Your, your quantity is just going to be a little bit lower. Um, so which is, which is, again, if you go back to the Facebook lead ads, you're more likely to get leads, you know, full stop. Other questions about what we've talked about today? Going once, 
going twice, going three times. Um, okay, well, like I said, guys, um, innovation exchanges are coming up in September and October. I am super, super excited to get back on the road and see everybody there. We're going to have a listings to leads table where we talk about some of this stuff again. Um, this has been one of, like I said earlier, one of our, one of my favorite sessions that we've gotten to do the past couple, past year or so, because um, your attendance has been great. So please, if you guys have success, if you have questions, please let us know the, the, um, uh, the testimonials, if you will, from this have been so, so exciting. So please share those um, as, as things work. And um, if you have questions for support or questions on how to do this or that, Please remember all of these are on Schmidt Video Classroom. This is gonna be up probably with by one. Don't quote me on that, please. Um, but this afternoon, this one will be up. Um, there's a playlist just for the Bag and Leads videos and they're all there. So thank you guys for your time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for um, trying to grow and better your business. Um, if you have questions, you know where to find us. Have a great rest of your day. Have a wonderful Labor Day weekend and I'll see you guys soon. Bye everybody.